Hello everyone, this is Ayanshu Devavrata. I have done my graduation from Ravensha University and my post graduation from IIT Kharagpur taking geology as the subject. And in this year's UPSC combined geoscientist examination, I have secured all India rank one in the geologist category. And uh, I am really thankful to Sangeeta Di of GeoGanam channel for giving me this opportunity to interact with all of you and address some of the questions that you people have asked uh, through various platforms. And I hope that whatever answers I'm giving, you can incorporate them in your preparations and you will be really benefited from that. So the first question I will be addressing that is, uh, what was your mantra for your success? And honestly, I will tell that I don't think uh, scoring good in one examination can be termed as a long-term success. But I can only tell uh, what worked for me uh, during this preparation. So during my mains preparation, uh, the only thing I kept in my mind that it doesn't matter whether I could finish 60 to 70 percent of syllabus or 80 to 90 percent of syllabus. But one thing I will uh, keep in my mind that I will not give up until and unless I have finished the last question of the last paper. So that was the attitude uh, during the preparation. And even if ups and downs came and uh, there were many challenges during the final year of MSc, but uh, I tried my best to stuck to my preparation, maintain a good planning and good consistency. And that uh, really helped. And the second thing I uh, really worked on that was the lifestyle, my food intake, my exercise, my sleep and my rest. So I tried to regulate them as well as possible so that I could get enough uh, energy and enough concentration to study focusedly and uh, whatever content I am consuming, I could uh, process them and I could at least use them well. So that was the uh, that were the two those are the two things uh, that I worked on. And other than that, I got a really good friend circle and also uh, supportive parents and seniors. So all of those guidance came uh, well, uh, really well, and that's why I think uh, the rank comes as we have seen that. So that was, uh, I think, uh, those are the things that really worked well in my favor. The second question I will uh, address that when did you start your preparation and when one should ideally start preparing for this exam? So during my time, I only started preparing uh, for the prelims examination in November 20. 21 after uh, the form fill up process completed but it was a haphazard process so for prelims i couldn't prepare well but for mains i started preparing in the first week of march itself and then i continued up to the mains examination and even before the interview one and one and a half month before the interview i uh, resumed my preparation and it went up to the interview date and when one should ideally start preparing, I will uh, tell that it is an individual choice, but at least you should give yourself the maximum time with good clarity that yes, if you want to get a job uh, in Geological Survey of India, make sure you uh, get complete clarity that yes, I want to do that. And for that, I think one year is a sufficient time. So you can do that in your uh, gap time of MSc first year to second year or else uh, in a different way I will tell that uh, from the graduation or from the masters itself everyone is preparing because the contents we are consuming the things that we we have been studying in our classrooms all those things uh, come into play during our examination so it's just a way of channelizing them uh, in a focused preparation so you could do that giving yourself at least uh, a time of one year. In my time, as I decided late that I want to go to GSA, that's why I have to prepare uh, within four to five months. But other than that, if you are uh, really clear about that, you should give yourself the maximum time. Then uh, the third question you got, that what are the standard books you referred for the preparation and how one should select a particular book 
on what basis so for the uh, books uh, there were many books so it will take really a lot of time to name all of them so i will request all of you to please uh, watch out my channel and in that uh, i have uploaded paper wise resources book list and notes for uh, all of the topics so you could uh, really watch them and i hope that they will benefit you a lot and then uh, how one should select a particular book on what basis at least for the gsa examination i will tell that uh, rather than the book the content matters so if you just look at the syllabus and whatever content you are getting from there you take any book suppose sedimentary uh, for example you take a sedimentary book of sambox or gary nichols and then just look at the index or look at the chapters that which contents are beneficial for my gsi syllabus what are the topics that are uh, correlating or that are uh, similar in in the syllabus and in the book so in that way uh, any book you take or any reference or notes you take you just correlate with the syllabus and you can get a clarity that yes this book is good uh, and i can uh, study them and the second thing is the ease of understanding and the personal comfort uh, suppose i am most uh, more comfortable with uh, gary nichols but someone else might be more comfortable with sambox so it's up to personal choice but content is the uh, most uh, content is of the most priority then the uh, next question is how to make notes so there is no particular strategy to make notes even i didn't follow any particular strategy uh, due to lack of time i just whatever i was studying i just copied it down from the textbook and i just wrote it down for my writing practice but uh, if you want to make notes uh, it doesn't matter how you are making just keep the space in the examination in your mind that you are getting three pages for 15 marks two for 10 1 for 5 so likewise whenever you are making notes you just keep those things in your mind and accordingly you will be making your notes it might be subjective it might be objective it might be point wise in whichever way you think you will be beneficial you should stick to you, your own way because at the end of the day what matters that how you consume that uh, content of the note and whether you could recall all those things in the examination hall in the pressure environment so even if you don't have a perfect note but if your recalling capacity is really good your reconnecting capacity is really good then i think uh, you will be uh, beneficial in the examination so there is absolutely no problem in the uh, style of note making then the next question is how did you memorize uh, or remember everything and subjects like stratigraphy uh, personally i didn't remember or memorize everything because as we keep revising things three to four times some things automatically get uh, accumulated in our brain so it's just a way of uh, when we are writing if those things come in a sequential manner then our answers will also be good so in that way as the revision progresses there are many things that got stuck in my mind and also some of the th things when i discussed with my friends uh, and also when i teach to my juniors some of the uh, headings so those things also really help because that uh, helps you to build a story like thing so when you build a story of any question or any topic so in that story manner you can remember the content and also write it down for subjects like stratigraphy yes uh, for the tables stratigraphy tables uh, i have revised them at least 5 uh, to 6 times uh, just the table part because as you revise more and more if you remember the table uh, only the lithostratigraphic table then other contents from the book uh, you can slowly add to them so suppose you are like uh, stratigraphy if you first remember only the names of the lithostratigraphic divisions then what are the uh, minerals present what are the fossils present so you can slowly add to them uh, one by one uh, in a stepwise manner and if you practice it for 3 to 4 times i think uh, most of the things will be 
uh, imprinted in our mind. So in that way, I did my part. Then uh, next question is, does writing matter and what should be the structure and format of writing? Yes, writing definitely matters because it shows that whether you could recall the knowledge uh, or present the knowledge in a good way uh, during the pressure environment. So whatever it might be possible that you have read thousands of books in your five years, but in the examination hall, you have to get the content out of your mind and present them in a way so that you could get maximum marks uh, out of it. So that's why writing matters. So whenever uh, you are studying anything, so try to build it up like a story, uh, remember it like a story and ask some, some of the questions. Suppose any heading comes, ask yourself that what, uh, what it is, then how it is formed, uh, what is the reason it is forming in, uh, then the next question is where it is forming in India, which uh, group or which stratigraphy will be finding these uh, things. So all those questions when you ask to that heading, then automatically you will get content for your writing. And if you write in that way, then the uh, content will be very good. And also the examiner, uh, I feel personally that the, it, it will appeal more to the examiner because it will give a logical explanation. And also some addition of some diagrams, some flowcharts whenever possible. And uh, keeping a uh, balance of writing and spacing. So whenever you are writing, keep uh, some empty spaces in between the lines so that at least whatever you are writing, the examiner could read it properly and it, you could also underline them for better highlighting. So all those small, small things uh, will be helpful during your uh, format of writing. So there is no particular structure, particular format. Everyone has their way. It's just that how you recall everything uh, and present them in a way you want within the time limit. So within the time, within the space and within the pressure environment. Then the next question is revision strategy before exam and before one or two days of exam. So if you are preparing for at least one year, then I will advise you that uh, before one or two days, it's a day of, it's a time of complete rest your mind because it would be possible that you might be traveling during that time so better to give uh, proper rest but if you are a fresher and if you could not finish everything in time so during the last time don't keep anything new for your mind just uh, have a look over a look uh, on the older things that you have prepared or at least you can give a look to your notes or some of the points that you have mentioned or at least the stratigraphy tables, whatever things uh, you feel that uh, you could see. But, but please don't keep anything new for uh, the last two days because uh, you will be feeling very heavy if you study any new thing at that time. And revision strategy, uh, it depends because in my time, uh, what I used to do that even one or uh, one and a half months before, I kept a balance of studying new things uh, at a particular time of the day and then revising some things uh, that I have studied in the last month. So in that way, I kept a continuous flow of studying, revising and uh, analyzing previous year questions. So when I reached the month of June, I have uh, covered a good amount of syllabus with one part of revision completed. Uh, so uh, in that way, you could uh, uh, analyze your syllabus and your preparation and accordingly you give yourself the sufficient time for revision. Then the next question is uh, who was your inspiration and why did you choose this exam uh, examination? So it would be very hard to pick one person as my inspiration because uh, there are many aspects uh, during our exam preparation. So I could tell that if I uh, want to learn to thrive in the hardship situations. Then my parents and my best friend, they serve as great inspiration because I have seen them going through the hard times 
and yet uh, being physically and mentally strong to deal with the situations. If I could tell the uh, examination point of view or at least the study point of view, then my senior uh, Pranay Kishore Mahanti, uh, he was an inspiration to me because just the way uh, he used to study and he gave us some advice, one to two advice, and that really changed the way I looked at learning. And also if uh, other persons, how to keep a, a good lifestyle, how to keep my motivation. So in that sense, the Indian cricket team served as a great inspiration uh, to me and I really followed uh, the lifestyle thing, the uh, not giving up attitude. So all those things uh, really came into uh, help for my preparation. So uh, all those persons are my inspirations. And why did you choose this examination? Uh, because uh, at the end of the October 2021, I was really exhausted uh, to choose uh, which thing is good for me for my future and seeing multiple options I got really confused and then I decided that I will do only one thing and with my maximum effort and I will choose one exam uh, which will test my different dimensional abilities such as uh, not like only the MCQ abilities uh, so it would test me in my subjective in my objective and also in my personality uh, level also so that's why I chose GSA examination and uh, and also by God's grace, it worked really well. Then after this round, I also got some of the query uh, queries of students. And the first one is strategy during three hours of examination. So what I used to do uh, as I didn't get any time for answer writing practice, so at uh, every night before sleep, I used to uh, like for use permutation and combination that uh, how many uh, hours I will be getting for one, how many minutes I will be getting for one answer. If in the first hour I am finishing 60 marks, then how I will approach the next two hours. If I am finishing 70, how will I approach? So all those things I used to simulate in my mind and used to train my mind that uh, yes, this is my plan A, this is my plan B and in this way I want to uh, progress and I want to attempt my examination. So that thing I just followed that in the first uh, hour of the examination, I gave complete focus on the short notes uh, for the first 10 questions and then uh, one to two long question answers and I tried to finish at least 70 marks uh, or 65 marks in the first hour. And then uh, the second hour is 60 to 65 same. And in the last hour, you can uh, increase your speed and at least uh, you can compromise on your handwriting uh, a bit to finish the rest of the things. And I also use another strategy that in any way, I won't be attached to any one question emotionally. And I will try my best to finish each and every question uh, of the question paper. So even if I don't know anything, I will at least try to give two, three lines with a diagram of good logical explanation of that thing. And that uh, really helped me in my examination uh, writing part, you will tell. Then the second question is some tips for CUET PG preparation. Uh, I think this is the common uh, entrance test uh, you are asking. Uh, in our time, it was different like for different universities, different examination was being conducted. So STEM tips that uh, see the syllabus and also pick any one syllabus. If you don't have any syllabus for any entrance examination, just pick for example, the JAM, IIT JAM syllabus or GSI syllabus, anything you just pick and you see the contents that from which contents are relevant today from where the questions are being asked and you prepare your things in that way. And another thing that don't put too much load on your mind by reading new content every time, uh, keep some of basic stuffs being revised more and more. The more we revise, the more uh, the things get concreted in our mind. So revision is more, or you get uh, more and more revision. 
and also discuss with your friends or at least try to teach yourself in a way that uh, you will understand the logic behind the things. So each and every dimension will help you uh, in your preparation. Then the revision strategy for prelims. Uh, for prelims, I didn't prepare that well. So there was no specific strategy, but the same thing is uh, for GS part, uh, if you are preparing well, then for the last 10 to 15 days, at least revise for two to three times. And for the geology part, the in GSI prelims, mainly the questions come from the basic part, or it was not too hard or not too easy. Uh, there are some tricky questions. So you, you could practice some of the old questions, or you could at least prepare your mind that how you want to approach uh, the two hours of the examination. So all those things uh, you could do. And second thing is just read the basic books that you have been uh, reading from the graduation and post-graduation. Because as you have already gained uh, a good understanding over those books, so during the last time, it will increase your speed of revision. And also, you, will, you can be quickly uh, recalling all those concepts uh, within the time span. Then the fourth one is approaching general studies paper. Uh, GS paper was uh, in our time, it was science heavy. And the next year, the pattern changed uh, in a different way. I will tell that uh, GS you have to prepare for the current affairs, for the environment, and at least uh, keep three to four parts uh, from the exam, uh, from the syllabus of GS, uh, which you have to be good at. At least, uh, suppose for example, in my part, I took science, current affairs and geography. So those were uh, my strengths. So I took them, I prepared them well. And some parts like economics and history, uh, I have to leave them because I couldn't uh, get enough time to prepare them. But if you are preparing for at least uh, one year or eight months, then you get sufficient time to prepare all of them and also keep up uh, practice of solving questions because in the examination, you don't have to read much, you have to solve questions. So that's why uh, at least for the GS part, keep a practice of solving questions. Then time management during preparation with respect to syllabus analysis, major and minor topics divided by time. So uh, if you are asking about the mains examination or any kind of examination, so for my, my mains examination, what I did that in the first one and a half month, I tried to finish all those things which I haven't studied before. Uh, because as the difficult part gets finished uh, quickly, then uh, the confidence will increase and we will be uh, quickly finishing all those uh, things that we have studied before. So in that way, I divided the syllabus uh, and the paper three was a new new to me. So that's why I did it first and then I went to paper one and two or in any day, if you feel exhausted by paper three, uh, I uh, went in that approach that in the first half of the day, I will be studying paper three and in the second half, I will be studying any part of paper one and two. So similarly, you could uh, do that for any kind of exam preparation. So any topic you are not good at, but you should be good at, then finish that first. Then uh, answer writing strategy for men's qualitative. So I have already discussed that uh, asking the questions to yourself that uh, the WH word questions that will help you to give a logical answer to every question. Then second thing is you uh, you can write point wise or paragraph wise, but be uh, ready to give some of the uh, spaces and some arranged uh, arrangements that would look good to the examiner's eyes. And also whenever you are doing any diagrams, uh, just make sure to give some good captions in it with good labeling. And uh, it might be a rough diagram, but at least give some captions and also good labelings. So in that way, uh, and also keep the answer sheet uh, neat and clean. Don't uh, cut out too much so, because that will create a wrong impression. So the last question that how to maintain uh, consistency in studies. Uh, so only thing is uh, 
during my time i yes there were sometimes i really felt bad i don't want to study so but uh, i tried my best to at least go uh, nearer to the to my plans because if i plan for 8 hours and today i am not ready to study 8 hours i at least try to study 3 to 4 hours so in that way the consistency will be maintained and the remaining 2 3 hours you can give yourself a break and also give yourself time to refresh yourself and analyze your plans so all those things uh, will be helpful so that's why if you are uh, getting really exhausted at least give yourself uh, some break or do something which you find peace with like singing like dancing or yoga anything you feel uh, that that thing so like calms you down so you could do that thing and then uh, get rejuvenated and also come back to your preparation because if you have a strong purpose that yes i want to do this examination then the uh, consistency part will automatically come into play because every morning when we wake up we will have a mission to achieve that yes this examination is my goal i want to do well in this examination and that's why i have to be consistent so these are the questions uh, and I hope that uh, whatever I have answered, uh, you will find some points to uh, incorporate them in your preparation. And again, I'm really thankful to Geoganam channel for giving me this opportunity. And I'm wishing all the best to all the candidates for the upcoming GSI men's examination. Wishing you all the best. Thank you.